Housing Authority Board of Commissioners meeting at 2.17 uh, on Thursday afternoon, September 22nd. First will be to approve the minutes of August 24th, 2022. Same three of us were here, so this should look familiar. It does. <laughs> I read it this morning, so. Yeah. Make a motion we accept the minutes from the last minute. Second. Okay, any questions? Just the ceiling fans, any update on that? Since it's uh, in here? Yes. <coughs> yes, um, I'll go over that when I get okay. my report. Okay. All right, no other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, Kenny. Next item is the financial report. Which one are we looking Which at? Which one are we looking at? The, the fi oh, financial is okay. Which one? Treasurer's Treasurer's report. August thirty first, yep. twenty twenty two. Okay. There's still no laundry receipts there. Um No. I noticed that. Yeah. How's our washer dryer situation? Um, That's in your report too. Okay. okay. All right. I'll wait for that. Checking account is down that much. Is that usual? Thirty-nine thousand. Um, we had to pay out on the fish project. Okay. So it'll, it'll come back up. Okay. Rent is still that up there, right? Yeah, yeah the, uh, we're having some issues with 705s that uh, collecting rent. So has that gotten worse than the last time? No, no, no. I, actually, um, one of the tenants did come in and pay a big chunk of her. Okay. So we have one vacancy down at the 667 here. Last month, yeah. Is it occupied now? No, I'll go over that. Okay. okay. <laughs> you got everything covered. I do. <laughs> I got a list. Okay. Okay. Anything of substance on the second page? Um, no, not really. The um, the expenses are, you know, within the what we normally have every month. We haven't really spent a whole lot of extra money on anything. Um, we're going to have to. We did order. Um, salt you know so that'll be hitting us next month when that comes in um just to make sure we have it okay. it's on time because you know we're kind of worried yeah. about things That's coming in on time right yeah stockpile Questions, Don? Anything hit you? No, no, Diane. Okay. I guess we would need a motion to approve the Treasury report of August 31st, 2022. I'll make a motion that we approve the Treasurer's report August 31st, 2022. Second. Thank you. All those in approval? Aye. Aye. Next is the warrant report dated between 9-1 and 9-30-2022. Do we have an online payment for stoppage? Um, yeah, I use the debit card to buy the food for the um, party. party. Out of the wash and dryer repair account, right? we talked about. <laughs> what does gas slip tractor mean? Uh, um, it was the gas slip for the 
hay to see that they uh, the tractor uses diesel. Carmel and Farms didn't. Grammy doesn't have diesel, so we have to go to hay to see to get gas. So. Diesel. Yeah, we get diesel for it. Wood and copper? Oh, yeah, we had to have yeah. the the testing. Wow, that's a lot to take. They went up on their prices finally. Nice. They, you know. How often do they do that? Um, I'm not sure. They do it at least once a year. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what the schedule the DEP notifies them what they have to test for and they have to come get the water. Do they go in every unit? No, they go to the well. Wow. Still able to get the paint from Sean Williams? Yeah. Okay. That's for uh, multiple units. Multiple units, yeah. They have good paint. You might as well get good paint. Not as big a warrant report as usual, right? Mm -hmm. Not as big as a warrant report as usual. No. Okay. Any questions? Anybody else? No. Okay, again, a motion to approve the warrant report. Okay. Motion to approve the warrant report. Thank you, Don. Second. Second by Dan. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, Amy. All right. So You're up. <coughs> um, the laundry, sometimes it skips the month because you can't get to the coin. The, the coin machines are broken at the bank, so I have to so do two on one month and one up, none on one month um, on that one, unless I want to spend a couple hundred bucks and get a quarter of and roll them and so that's that. Um, the ceiling fans, the uh, ARPA funds have finally, that the ceiling fans were under, have finally um, started to come through with fish numbers. So once we get the fish number, then we can actually go ahead and start um, the process of it. Um, so I've gotten uh, the tree trimming came through with a fish number, so we're just kind of hoping they're trickling. Put a couple others in and whatever, so hopefully that'll come through soon. Um, Did your report in here, Tammy? Do we? No, I didn't. Want a copy of it? Okay. Do you want a copy? Oops. You want a copy? No, I'm good. Oh, okay. okay, that's fine. I'm just checking. Um, <clears throat> we have four vacancies here at Fins Hill. Four. We had um, a tenant pass away at the beginning of September. Um, the tenant moved into um, assisted living. So the tenant moved down, um, and then uh, we probably will have another one by the end of in November. Um, we have somebody who moved into an assisted living facility. Family is currently paying the rent only because they told her they would give she would try it for a little bit before that happened. We were kind of holding off on the vacancies. Lester had a fire, um, and they were looking to place people, so they asked us to kind of hold off. Um, on it, so now we're back into. They don't need them. They don't want to come as far out. So um, we're in the process of filling that. It should be filled within the next week. Did okay. you say there were 5,700 people on the list for the grid? Oh yeah. Yeah. So there shouldn't be any. Oh yeah. No. It's just it's a it's a process. So you you know yeah. you we pick a hundred names oh. and you send out paperwork for a, you know for a hundred because you don't you can pick. 50 names and not have anybody return it. Okay. So you have to kind of go through and look at the list and see, you know, is there anybody in Granby? Is there anyone in Chickabee? Is there anyone in, you know, anyone anywhere near here who might be interested in it? Um, and you do that online, not everything is online. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you have to stay within your percentages for elderly and non elderly and your minorities. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's. You know, you can pull a you can pull a list of names and then not have any of them return them because you know, and then you have to start off the whole process over again. So it's um, it's, it's daunting. Yeah. Um, I'm actually considering getting a hold of Mass Naro in Boston and asking them. They charge fifty cents an applicant 
So it would be a lot of money up front to have them go through and do their priority and the preference screening, but they send the letters out and then the tenant has, or the applicant has to reply back. Mm -hmm. And if they don't reply back, then they get bumped to a seven. So it a should, seven. the seven is the, you're not homeless, you have no, you just are looking to live in, in housing to make it easier on you. Yeah. So we're hoping that that, by doing that, <coughs> it will make our selection process easier and not as time consuming and as expensive. Now you've got the cost of the envelope because it requires a large envelope and then the postage is about a dollar sixty, a dollar seventy. So to have them do it for fifty cents. Oh, I thought right you said now. you did it all by um, computer. Well, you the wait lists are are done online, but you still have to physically send. Oh, that's what I meant. I thought yeah. you were sending all no. those hundred. No. no, you have to physically print them. Yeah, you know, today we sent out because we have the handy the wheelchair unit, so we sent out fifty packets today. Wow. Um, oh. So. And most of you don't get an answer from them. Well, this one where you, sometimes you do and sometimes you don't, it, it depends on who's your, on the list. I, I like to look at the list and pull where there are some people that live in this area mm -hmm. to hope that you get them to reply. But sometimes you pull a list and everybody is in the Boston area and you know that they're not going to, you know, you, you just. Then why did they choose Green Bay in the first place? They're in a shelter and they have to apply for housing. Yeah. Click. I'm sure they choose a lot of places. Yeah. You know, so it's, um, so anyways, hopefully that will make it easier. Um, one of the vacancies we do have, we have here, is going to require some extensive um, floor in the entire apartment to be done. Last. And, you know, so it's, I'm trying to find the best price because it's $3,000 for flooring right now. So that's that. So we have the fair marketing, the reasonable accommodation, and the language plan, which are part of the PMR. Um, so they do have to be approved today. Um, and the only other thing is we did get the check in from Hampshire Power on the um, alternative energy credits. It did come in um, for 68000 and we got I, all of it? I, Gary's checking on it. I still have the check. I haven't deposited it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I called him and let him know, and he's going to check and see. Joe went back for that, didn't he? Yeah. Good. So um, we don't know whether we'll have to pay them part of it, um, but we do have to. Okay. Wow, um, that's great. And then the last thing I have is I did away with um, comp time. The maintenance staff work, um, <coughs> earned comp time, and they just got paid their normal hours, and then anything over it was accrued, and it was getting really out of hand so I um, I talked to Gary and we, um, I decided that I was going to do away with it they get paid what they work now um, over time is at 40 hours a week instead of going over what their normal hours were um, however <coughs> paying them out was quite a large sum because they had a lot of hours so I just need the board to prove my paying them out and doing that away with that so how long a period are we talking about? Well, they've been accruing time since before I got here, 2018. So they would work over there? So if they were, if say um, their normal, like my normal hours are 18. If I worked anything over 18, it was they, or their comp time was time and a half, is how Mary had it set up. So you they, didn't 19, get that. <clears throat> they didn't get paid the 19, they got paid the 18 and then they got one hour, one and a half hours in comp time. And it just kept accruing because they haven't been able to, you know, nobody can ever get rid of all of them, especially in the winter when it snows there. You know, there were two snowstorms, they were here, you know. Somebody was here all the time going through everything, so. Business-wise, I felt that it was best to just pay them what they're earning. You get you right now. You have you earn five dollars an hour. You get paid that five dollars an hour versus comp time. You hold on to it and we use it in four years. Now you're making ten dollars an hour. And I'm paying out. So and you can just do that. You can just say, Mary made the 
policy and you can change I, it? Yeah, Gary said that. that it, um, my understanding of comp time is illegal in Massachusetts. Who approved the comp time? It was there when I started in 2018, so I'm not sure where it came from. Could have been. But I mean, the person's comp time, who, who keeps track of that? And I, you, I keep track of that. So you have to say, okay, you, you do get one hour comp time for doing what you just did or whatever. Right, right. And wow. how are the maintenance staff feeling about that? They, they, uh, they were a little. They kind of wanted to keep some of it to have some of a buffer to, you know, time off and everything, so they didn't have to use vacation time or sick time and all that. But I, um, no, it's, it's so if they wanted to leave two hours early, they would ask you, "Can I? I'm going to use two hours comp time to leave now." Is what they were, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and um, you know, you have two weeks vacation and you have a lot of weeks of. How many what kind of hours are we talking about? Um, one had 342 and one had 212. Hours? Mm -hmm. All of it. Mm -hmm. And you're saying it's illegal? I was told that it was illegal to have content in Massachusetts. I talked to a couple other executive directors and they said, no, I don't, we don't do that. We just pay them what they work. They punch in and punch out they get paid for what they work. And they didn't do it before Mary, but it was just... Well, I, I don't know. I, it, it, when I came and Mary was here, it was here. I don't so remember, really. I don't, beyond that, I don't know. But the crew wasn't here hours. when... Um, if they had Mary. both just started yeah. when... I mean, Dakota was here prior, but then left, and then um, I think they were both hired in October, September or October. Mary and I started hired Jim. I know that. I don't know about Dakota. Yeah, um, we were all hired within a couple months of each other. So Gary has already figured into like the two budget. Months of, two months of forty-hour pay times. Yeah, so uh, Gary's already figured it into the budget to offset, you know, figured this into everything, so he's... So you have to pay that to make it stop, or you just make it disappear? Well, we're paying it out, because paying it's time it out. that okay, they That's what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, so we have to trying to figure out, out how that would go. Right. But they wanted to keep it and save it. But well, they wanted to keep time. part of the time. Not all of it, part of the time, so they have a little bit of buffer yeah. because they're used to having yeah. the buffer of, hey, I got a yeah. doctor's appointment, I got to yeah. go. Whereas now they're stuck with personal time and sick time, then you know you you cut down the amount of leeway. You can, you know. Maybe a stupid question, but if they if they earned some of these hours for years ago, well, mm -hmm. and you're going to pay them their hourly right now, is that? Pay, well, that's what I mean. I have to pay them their hourly right now. That's why I was. But not what? Not three years ago. No. Well, that doesn't seem. Right. That's why I. That was one of the things I was like, you know what? I want to just. It's not a good deal for us. No, it's not a good it's deal, deal for us. Them. Oh. How much personal time and sick time do they get? Um. You, they get two personal days a year. Everybody gets two personal days a year. And then um, Jim earns eight hours sick time a month, and Dakota work earns five sick time hours a month. And they each get two weeks vac vacation. Or, you know, so Dakota gets 40 hours of vacation time, and Jim gets 64 because they work different amounts of hours. So is most of that comp time yeah. earned because of winter storms? Where, how do they get, um, how do you get other well, time? The, the, um, the well, you have to do a well rating every day. So the way Mary had it set up, or the way it was set up when I was hired, I can't blame Mary because I'm not sure who started it. Every time you come in, it's a two hour guarantee. So you come in, you snap, that's why I would come. was coming in for a long time and just on Saturdays and Sundays and taking a picture because otherwise I'd have to pay them four hours. The well, you have to take a well reading every day and you have to test the water every day for the Department of Environmental Protection. Who tests the water? So when I was coming in on the weekends, um, so weekends are done, but Ron was testing the water. Ron Richards, one of the tenants, has been trained by 
the people to how to pull it and how to do it. Um, so I was coming in and just snapping the picture because he doesn't have access to the well. He can't get into the pump house. So how does he test the water? In his apartment. You have to take, <coughs> fill a vial. There's two vials, you fill a vial, put some chlorine in one of them, and they put it in the meter and it tells you what the reading is. Does he get paid for that? No. Nope. He does that. To do that. He does that just to. Wow. Just to do. Go to the order. That's good. That's very nice. Yep. Yeah. So right there, that's four hours a week. That you know. So he works 32 hours, but he gets paid 36. And it, the way it was set up before, it was time and a half. So it's. And that's in their contract. Can can you adjust that? Can well, that be visit revisited, or is that? I mean, they don't have a contract. They just go by the the personnel file, the personnel policy. Well, should that be revisited? I mean, we can. It doesn't say right. anything in there about comp time, and I mean, I figured it would. Nothing against. I guess I mean, I'm sure they're good workers and so on. But wow, with this. So what? How did this come up all of a sudden? about the comp time they have a lot of comp hours and it, they're not we weren't so they there's you know like 600 comp hours between the two of them and they're not there's not enough time to use them and yeah. it just seemed that they were it was they were occurring more and more and you know uh, just you know what it's easier to just pay them what they work instead of keeping track and and then uh, they're earning it at this money, but then when they go to finally use it, if it's a different year, they're, they're being paid out, compensated at a higher rate. So they could just which is what which has been working because no one's paid them in, so they're right. whatever they made three years ago, they're certainly making more now. Right. <laughs> yep. Could they work their full week and then say, oh, I want six of my comp hours? No. Could so you, you just say, I want six hours right. off. Right. So I'm I work eighteen hours a week. If I had comp time, I could say, you know what, I'm not coming in this week. Use my comp time. Right. And that could be bad. Right. Only two workers. Right. Oh my. Right. Yeah. So I just wanted to. Yeah. not have that yeah I can see why and how does the budget support that Gary said that it we will be okay that he's he's um, it's something I I didn't just make the decision Gary and I have been talking to him about it for like six or seven months now just to make sure that there's I'm not going to have any problems and he said that we'd be okay he's going to fix it into fit it into the budget so approximately how much money is that About a lot of money. Almost twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, if you can address it, it's being addressed now and done away with. Okay. I guess that has to be done that way. There's nothing. I think. I can't say thanks for working all those hours. The best choice. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys, for working all those hours. Very nice of you. Will there be any, uh, you know, repercussions? them saying well I'm not going to do any extra no I we actually um, did away with the comp time with July 1st is when they stopped so when the year ended it ended um, and they've been okay well, so now it's just catching it, so up on everything yeah they're getting paid for it so it's not right. like they worked and didn't get anything right. for it so right yeah okay so I just need to the board to hold on it so what would it be for just for clearing the comp time out and paying the employees? To doing away with it. And just and we're only talking two, right? Just two. Yeah, just two. It's only the maintenance staff. Maintenance staff, okay. That. It doesn't um, apply to shelf time. So I just need the board to approve the doing away with maintenance comp time. I make a motion that um, we do away with the maintenance comp time and pay the remainder to the employees who earned it. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Comp time issue is gone. And they're paid. And they will be Don, you're up. Commissioner, thank you, Tammy. I'm up. I just have a couple of things. Okay. forgot to talk about the laundry. Go ahead. Um, we are down, we're down one 
the washing machine, the belt went. Um, the appliance guy has a front loader, which holds more than the other ones. So um, we're going to switch them out um, just to see how it goes, well, how people like it. Um, if we don't like it, then he'll come switch them back out again. Um, just to, so he's going to be doing that. Um, and then we'll have four working. It's my goal to see whether we can actually fit a fifth washing machine in there and have um, him fix the one that's in there and put it back in. Okay. So that's my washing machine. A washer dryer episode. Thank you. Go ahead, Don. Okay, I just have a, a couple things I'd like to bring up. Can you mention the uh, ceiling fan? Yep. Again. Now, are you looking at still moving them, or is it going to be a removal? Because at this point, uh, I'd like to hear a little bit more about that portion of it. We well, we've gone forward as the removal. We have the money from the ARPA funds to do not the removal to move the, the moving of uh, them. The moving of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I know that's my so concern. I mean, yeah. That's other tenants' concern. Yeah, no. The, the funding did come through on I mean, that they not be removed, but just. That they be moved. Moved, but they not, not removed. Right, not okay. removed. Okay, right, right, okay. Exactly. Because right. they want the fan. Right. Correct, okay. correct. Okay. Yeah. And um, the only thing that I can say that I'm really tired of hearing about, I hear about it from a whole bunch of people is one of our tenants, your next problem child or current problem child. Um, I know he hasn't broke, broken his lease, et cetera, et cetera. I'm hearing from more people now uh, stories about him. And it's, it, at this point, it's just that I'm fed up with the gossip. And I know there's nothing that can be done about it. People are going to talk. Are they filling out those reports? No. Remember no. So I we just did those, but nobody will yeah. fill them out. Yeah. So they, I had a tenant come in today, um, but will not put anything in writing. And that's what I've heard from other tenants. They, they just and are afraid to put in writing for some because, reason. Because? Oh. I don't know. I don't understand it. I, I did have a conversation with the lawyer last Thursday, last Friday when she was here about it. So she's, you know, we're hashing things, going back and forth on different, you know, has he done this? No, has he done, he's done that. All right, well, it's not, you know, because he hasn't done anything to violate his lease yet. <coughs> so, until I have. So why don't people fill the little form out? I don't know. I mean, I've talked to people, and as soon as I bring it up, oh, no, 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 I don't want to do that. Or even if I if mention, well, you've got to call Tammy on that. I'll talk to Tammy two, three days later. No, they didn't call. <coughs> so I, I, I don't know what else to do. Right. There's nothing you can do. Well, are you? If, if I filled one out and I had to put my name on it, are you sworn to secrecy? So if you address this, do you say that, well, Jim Petrus filled this out? Are you no, sworn? No, I'm not allowed to tell them who so do it the, do, the, it, do the tenants so know that? That this is a confidential? I've, I have informed them, you know, this is between you and Tammy. But if they're, they're anonymous. If you yeah. Were to, yeah. yeah, but yeah. if you were to come to me, you can't, I mean, I can't accuse him of anything and have it be anonymous. Uh, it's got to be. You've got to, you know, say who you are. Say, yeah. James says, you know, it's been brought to my attention that this is what happened. You know, what's your side of it? This is what I've been told. You know, if you're doing this, you can't. Um, but unless I have who it was and where it was, and then, of course, he knows when you're talking to him, they know who you're, you know, I mean, they I think know who has the issue, who had the issue, that turned it, you know, that wrote it down because he knows who they, he well, said. It seems to be pretty widespread, so. It is. Oh, it is. they have trouble picking who? <laughs> yeah, it, it, is wide, it is widespread. Yeah. I think people, it's easier for people just to run their mouths and not back it with, oh, yeah. I did say this, or no, I didn't. And by signing a piece of paper, they're admitting that they, yeah. you know, said something or did something, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But if they have a problem with something that's going on here, 
you know, they figure they can just come and knock at my door and I'm going to make it go and then, away. And then they get mad when nothing is done. Right. But I don't have any, I, I have no, I have nothing to go forward with. You have to put it in writing. How about they get mad. How do you know they get mad? Because they get angry with me at the, in the office. And they, oh, they yeah. talk to you, but yet they won't and you've told share them. anything with you. Mm -hmm. If you put your name on this paper, it's... Yeah. And then they get angry because I don't, you know, I, I need you to put it in writing. I don't want to do it in, put it in writing. Well, then my hands are tied. I can't. And when they're not getting mad at Tammy, they go to they're getting mad at me. So and um, the, the stock thing that comes out of any conversation that I would attend is, so, well, then, what good is the board? And why did you even bother running for it? Then you don't know, fill it out and have them sign it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, here, this is what we do. This is what you need to do. Are the police being called for these? And is a police report an acceptable? I well, I understand There's the police were here just the other morning. I think for this individual, for this, right. I think it was for this individual. Well, what, the police were here the other afternoon. I don't know about the morning. They they were here the other afternoon. They called me, um, but he's not. I don't know of any tenants calling the police on him anymore. And how do they know to come down? So I know he calls the police oh my God. on himself. On, well, not that he's doing anything wrong, but that he needs things. So what? <laughs> no, really. Um, what does he call? The yeah. So he did. I mean, he did. You know. But again, when when Randall passed, his daughter was in the uh, and is staying in the apartment, going through some stuff. And he came up to the door and um, knocked on the door and was trying to get in. Randall never locked his door. They had a, they put a new door system in where it's a key fob to get in and out to alleviate the problem of people just walking in his apartment. And the daughter got scared and she called 911 and they came up. But at that point, he had left. When you watch the video, he literally was in the hallway probably seven minutes seven seconds it wasn't you know you could tell he went in and couldn't and then came back she didn't answer and he came back out um she was afraid you know she called 911 and when they came by the time the police got here he was already in here okay. so they didn't know it was him so oh they they knew it was him then is there a report? but there's there's a report but he didn't do anything wrong he just knocked on someone's door you know, granted, yeah, it was 11.30 at night, but he saw the lights on, he thought he was still up, and he didn't know that he had passed. Mm. You know, so it's, he is, he is doing something wrong, but he's not, it, it, you know, it's not, what he's done so far is. When police boring. are called here, do they report to you? Do they let you know? No, they don't. Shouldn't they let you know? No, they don't. You, don't I mean, you, could, you can call and get a report. Right. Oh, well, I've done that. There, there okay. have been you times. Don't re inform but, her, but yeah. you could call and ask for right. it. He walked into a tenant's apartment and um, the first time he did it, and I called the police department the, a day or two later to get a copy of the police report. And lo and behold, the, they didn't call the police when he did it. They called them the next day. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Okay. There's really been nothing. Um, but has it been less and less in terms of what you're listening to? It, no, or, it's no. yeah. about the same. About it the hasn't, same. hasn't really um, gone down any. In some ways, it's picked up. Yeah. Uh, because I'm hearing from everybody who I saw. Well, there's there very. I saw that tenant varying nicknames for him. Uh, at this place, at that place. Yeah, they're seeing him around the town. Around town, and yeah, that's at this business or that business, playing his guitar and panhandling. But that's not. It's not. That's not. That's, not, a, that's right not a pen right. sale issue. It's right. not. It's not a pen sale issue. But they don't understand. They don't understand that. They're. They're just. You know what? He's. They're just focused on him. Yeah. It seems. Yeah. Well, until they put it in writing, there's until he does something that. Somebody will put in writing and it warrants a violation of police, our hands are tied. You're doing all that you can, even though I know you, it seems to me you're facing a lot of the brunt, but I don't know how to, you to get away with that. I, I mean, don't know how to get away with it. I thought we were all set when Tammy sent around a notice mm -hmm. with a, an explanation mm -hmm. of what my duties were. We took something out of the 
Yeah. Playbook. Yeah. We don't wait for a little while. Put it on your, bo your door. Yeah. So when they like come to knock on your door, they can, you know. Right. If this is a board issue, you know, here's how to get a hold of the chairman of the board. You yeah. shouldn't be contacting the chairman. No. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, you have to fill out that form. You right. put one of those holders of paper right in your hallway. Yeah. Here's where you put your issue. Make it easy for them. Yeah. I mean, I put a put a form on the board out there too. Contact you. They don't have to go bother you. They can come pick one up here. Yeah, they don't need to. Yeah. Put one in the laundry room. Mm -hmm. Tammy, mm -hmm. can I ask a question? Sure. So if a certain person comes into your house. Welcome. Mm -hmm. You call 911 immediately. So immediately. So they're not reporting it to you? They're not, they're not telling you we're reporting it to you? No, they don't have to. They're, it's, they don't have to call me and tell me what happened. They're not required to. No. What, what do you think about something? Someone needs to sign something against them. Well, it, when... When somebody does something against you that is wrong or a violation of their lease or whatever, you need to put it in writing. Or call the off. What I've been telling people is call the office right away. That way, there's a date and a time stamp, and if I need to pull a video, I can pull a video for that specific time. And then you need to put it in writing of what happened. You know, and then I can investigate it. And if it warrants calling the police because they were involved in it, then I can do so. But the police don't have to call me to let me know what goes on here. But, but if, someone, if people don't, don't sign something, write something and sign I have, it's just hearsay. It's not, okay. you know. But I've been, you know, the people that have been involved in it where he's walked into their apartment, I, I call 911 immediately, even if he's standing there. 911, there's a gentleman in my apartment that is, I did not, you know, that walked in. And, you know, and then they can deal with it. Unfortunately, when it happened here to one of the tenants, she waited a day. Yeah, it would have happened to a couple of them. You know, and, um, you know, and I, I knew about him going into Randall's, and we took care of that by getting the fob. Unfortunately, the fob came, you know, a couple, just a couple days before Randy passed. So. And the door is like in the hotel. Can the tenant see who's at the door? No. There's no. There's, well, there's a little peephole. Yeah, there's a peephole. Can you see the person? There, there you can't see who's there? See. Yeah, you can make out who's there. Mm -hmm. But like in Randall's case, Right. He's in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah there's I, peepholes up here. He can't see. Right. Yeah, of course. But otherwise, a regular tenant could see who's at the door. Yes. And then no, you the, just I, I believe the four wheelchair have a glass pane. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. A fogged mm -hmm. glass pane. Mm -hmm. So you can talk so through the door and not even open your door if you don't want to. Right. Yeah. Right. And okay. in the one incident where the police were called here for him walking in, he went in through the bed across the hallway and, and it ended up it was her bedroom yeah but again she didn't have a door locked either right right so. like the people who have things taken out of their cars and the cars aren't locked you know right. But yeah. Yeah. Right. anyway so all right so i just have one more item sure uh the robocall Mm -hmm. Are we still going to be doing that? Or? We are doing that. We are doing that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, cool. What, what so the robocalls, it, it's not a robocar, it's um, an, a calling system where like if for winter when we need or move your car, move your car, then you know, Jim can just say, call the number and say, I am building one, you need to move your vehicles now and then hit the connecting oh. digits and it okay. lets them know. Instead of the honking, right now he right now he honks the horn, and if you miss the horn being honked, then you're, you know, yeah. you're not getting the message. But like if the electricity was out in building one once, we, you know, I literally had to call everybody, and you know the electricity is out. It's going to be a couple hours. If you need to go to the community room, go to the community. Um, so this will just alleviate a lot of that. Okay. Thank you, Don. Okay, thank you.
Next is the policy review, and the first one is the noise policy, the shortest one here that we've looked at before. Um, follows in policy put into place to establish guidelines for the disturbance due to noise. As per your lease, section 9 tenants obligations, quote, tenants must refrain from making or creating loud noises which unreasonably disturb or are likely to disturb neighbors. And then the, the hours between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. are being designated as quiet hours at the Housing Authority. Notice must be kept at a level which will not be heard in your neighbor's apartment. Documentation of noise complaints against tenants will be kept and repeated offense of this policy could lead up to and including eviction. That's what we talked about before, so that's what we would put on the docket right now for a beginning issue to see if this will work. Could lead up to and include eviction? Is yeah. That including? Yeah, that's what the lawyer said. Include. Yep. In, and including. Well, and including? Really? And that's the language she gave me. Okay. Well, it tells the story. And or including eviction or whatever, something yeah. like that. But anyway, the point is made that make too much noise, you could not be here anymore. Mm -hmm. That's what I would read that as. Yeah. Tammy, how about someone makes the, is making the noises outside on the sidewalk? Between at midnight. It, that we came home at one o'clock in the morning and he was calling nine one one. That would be a violation of the policy. Call nine one one. It would be a, you know, it's a violation of the policy. You said something around to that effect. To, that effect. to call nine one one. Oh, to that oh yeah. Once the policies are approved, then yes, it'll go around that way. Make a motion that we accept the policy as written. Second. Okay, just as like I read it. So all those in favor of approving the noise policy on September 22nd, 2022? Aye. 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 Approved. Don, Don, you weren't here for a moment. These are three policies that um, are part of the M PMR now, uh -huh. um, and they were just basically templates that were sent. You have to put in the information of the housing authority. It's not something that I came up with. They're very wordy. Yeah. Oh, heck yes. And you just you about, just keep those on file in the office, or do yeah. these have to be posted well, they're anywhere? Up, they're uploaded um, into um, the PMR. So CHAMP is the housing program, but there's a PMR side of it, and these are uploaded into it because it pertains to um, tenant selection. Okay. So once they're approved, then they're uploaded into that portion of it and so kept there. Now you have to do training on this? Huh? You have yes. To, yep. And then there's cards. I saw that that you would Yep. Have. The, um, the I speak cards. Yeah. Those do you have? It, to store? Uh, well, the no. If the card lists like 15 different languages, and it's in the top, it says I speak, and then it has all the different languages, mm -hmm. and they point to which language, and then we would call the ITC oh. and tell them I need someone to speak. Are you going to tell the person standing in front of you that's what you're doing? Just one moment. <laughs> that's right. One moment. Oh, so they'll be right there on the phone. And then you call the, the company and they get somebody on the line that speaks that way. You tell them what language they're looking for. During the hours of when the office is... Yeah. Yeah. I, thought, I thought the cards meant, you know, you, it would show you how to say, I uh, will. No, okay. You know, I thought it would... I, yeah, yeah. I didn't do well in Spanish in high school. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I yeah, but how many languages were there? Oh my God, there's, there's a ton of them. Yeah. A lot of them here. There are a I ton mean, of them. Yeah. Yeah. So this is basically stuff you have gotten and it's appropriate for us in Granby like it is everywhere else. Yep. It would be mostly maybe Spanish and Portuguese, Russian. Right. Yeah, I mean, there we have one tenant here that I have trouble with, with the Russian, but I used to have to wait for the grandchildren to get off the bus, and then I would meet with them, and yeah, yeah, because they spoke well. So. I used to be standing out there waiting for the school bus. 
I'll make a motion to approve the Grand Valley Language Access Plan policy as printed in front of us. Second. Any other questions? Not all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Language Access Plan Access Policy approved. Next on the list is the Fair Housing Market Marketing Plan. Again, you've gotten this from DHCD. Yeah, so DHCD sends us the template on it. I had to go through um, and input our Grammy. demographics for Granby and Springfield. Um, and then um, you have to input like um, where you would go. Um, so on page six, I think it is, it says marketing content generally, generally. Um, I had to put in that you know if we don't have anybody be a champ that to you know if we need a minority and I can't find anyone in champ then these are the places I will reach out to to try and find you know people who need an apartment that we mass live the register in that yeah yeah okay and that's organization churches there okay. so in other words THCD is burying the Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a different world these days, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, here. So if you've made an effort, do you just then put the application out to whoever is next on the list? or and you, If I've made an effort to find a minority mm -hmm. and I haven't been able to yeah. find a minority and I can't find one, yeah. And I, I just happened to have the documentation that I tried my darndest and couldn't, okay. and it went to somebody else. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Are all the steps before I can just say, yeah, you can have it? Tina, on page seven, it just jumped out at me. Um, on the bottom, outreach efforts to persons with disabilities in A. There's an exclamation point. I never saw that in Mass Law before. Oh, it, 15. B could just be when they were. I mean, yeah. have you ever seen that too? Which one now? Um, no, um, it's under it outreach efforts to person with disabilities in accordance with Mass General Mass Law 151B and an exclamation. It I could just, be that it whoever just put it in. in. I never saw that before. Have you? Yeah. But it's a typo. I think yep. that's a mistake. Yep. I don't know why I just caught my eye. Just highlighting 151B, it seems like. That's Maybe. the one. <laughs> and then there's a, yeah, a two yeah. paragraph four. Right. That can't be right. Paragraph four, seven A. Yeah. Subsection seven A. Yeah, something's wrong there. Yeah, got it. Okay. Just need to change the date in the back there if we're going to do that. Yeah. We have it on the front anyway, so. Uh, yeah. motion. I'll make a motion again to approve the Grammy Housing Authority Fair Housing Marketing Plan as presented to us on September 22nd, 2022. Second. Seconded. Any other questions? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 That's done. Last one is the Grammy Housing Authority Reasonable Accommodations is adopted on September 22nd as well. Yeah, this yeah. one was, this yeah. was the 22 page one, no, 17. Okay. That's because it's got the forms, the different attachments oh, on the different forms, forms that are used for, for yeah. each incident. Hey, oh, I couldn't figure out what, Which one? Um, it says that um, physical and psychological disabilities. And what kind of accommodations would those be? I mean, is it for a comfort psychological animal? For a psychological animal? That's all I can think of was a animal. comfort um, But what if your comfort animal is over the weight limit of the... You, it doesn't. You, it, okay, so you still can say no to that. No. Uh, I'm just thinking, you know, if it was a larger animal. If it's a larger animal and it's a reasonable accommodation for them and they already have them to come in, then you have to allow them to come in. Oh. That's not where I thought you were going with that. That you're saying no. So that you gotta let them in. You have to. Do they still have to come up with a head deposit at that point? 
Oh, uh, it's a comfort animal. If it's a, if, um, if it's a comfort animal, I believe so. If it's a service animal, no. All right. And what, what kind of documentation do you need to prove this? Because they, any people say, my, there's forms the doctors need. Doctors, doctors have to fill out. Yeah. Yeah. It says doctor or other professional. Well, it, it doesn't could be have a, to be. It could be a psychologist. A a licensed social worker may not, it may just say, oh, it's fine, you know, but it's, uh, and that makes it okay and absolute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with it completely. Yeah, I, I mean, there are, oh, I there are already it. rules here for the other people. If you're going to have, yeah. that's going to cause a problem. that many pages because some of the pages numbers are numbered the same here right so you notice um yeah the numberings might not be important off, yeah, yeah. Oh. A, lot of, a lot of 15. Do you have, are we obliged to supply any of this these like the um those reading machines that make the print bigger you do, you just have to allow them you don't have to supply them that's why i was unsure what are you reading i'm reading the ones about the uh, auxiliary aids you know the TTY, the assisted living what? listening devices. Page. Page yeah, we don't have to. Um, we so, don't have to supply them. No. No, so why would you need to approve a, a TTY phone? Right. It, it depends on the apartment. If the apartment's not accommodated for, you know, certain things. If it didn't have, if something needs Wi-Fi and it doesn't have Wi-Fi, you know, I don't know. Why. Um, I mean, I, I was trying to figure out, this is blank saying, yeah, we're all assistive devices, but, you know, you, do you have to then supply materials written in Braille? It said correspondence from the office. I read this thing and it was... Yeah, I mean, if, if somebody comes in and they, um, how are you going to go like, like, in Braille? we have one tenant that doesn't speak, so... If I didn't have any way of conversing with him, he has my he has all of our email addresses. If he needs to, because he can't just call on the phone, so it's um, so I got a hold of somebody to get him one of those machines. Um, if somebody was to come in and apply and get into the uh, here, and they needed they didn't see and they needed Braille, then we would have to go through and we would have to uh you know the i would think the commission for the blind yeah yeah they you would know, help you get that stuff yeah. you know the everything would have to be done but let's say you just have to send all the notices to everybody how are you going to do that? i would have to have it done i would have to we would have to get a machine that prints it out that way Exponential. I, mean, it's just I know, but it, it is the right thing to do, really, even though it's very cumbersome, but it's the right thing to do. But is it at the Housing Authority's expense, mm -hmm. all of this? Mm -hmm. Well, you can, I mean, like, you can, I, I'm sure if you were to reach out to the, to the, you know, Blind Commission, Commission they would have things yeah. that you can yeah. get and stuff like that, yeah. like getting him the, um, typing machine, you yeah. know, that they... I've done it, it with people, yeah, so yeah. I mean, yeah. I, but I didn't know whose responsibility it would be. If there is a cost on it, it would have to fall on the housing authority as a reasonable accommodation. For just for you communicating with them, but not for you to give it to the tenant because they want it? You know what I mean? No, it okay. would just be for me to communicate okay. with the tenant. It's right. not, I don't have to provide okay. to them so they can communicate was, was to unsure. anybody. No, okay. it would right. just be for me to be able to communicate. Because everything that I turn out to all of the tenants, I would have to make. Okay. You know, and them also. All right. This is really a lot of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just grab bars. Mm -hmm. It's not just grab bars. No, it's not. You know, and one of the questions they asked about it is, 
on the apps now is you know visual impairment hearing impairment because you have to put in the smokes the smoke detectors that flash right you can't hear because they can't hear and it wouldn't be just the apartment it would be in the community center also because they have access to right. these Well, I'm not thing you do when you're 18 hours a week, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, once again, I'll make a motion to approve the Family Housing Authority reasonable accommodations as presented to us on this September 22nd, 2022. Second. Seconded. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor of approval? Aye. 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 Unanimous. About three of us. No, I see what you mean. There's a whole bunch of page 15. Yeah, that's just. Yeah. <laughs> the last one really in our packet was the anti bullying policy, and uh, with Tammy wanting to hear back from the lawyer uh, a little bit more, um, we would just like to just table this until next month's meeting in October. That's and okay. Hopefully, by then, we'll have all the board. I would rather see the whole board right. be here from this vote. Absolutely, and hopefully Tammy will hear from the lawyer for any clarification of uh, reporting forms and so on. So I make that motion that we table this until our October meeting. Thank you. Second. Second by Diane and I'll all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Hold anti building policy till <coughs> October. Next is public comment. Anybody want to share anything? Is that me? <laughs> You're the public today. Everything is very well put today, and I'm happy to Thank you. I do have a public comment. Okay. Actually, it's a question. Tammy, uh, did Jim sign off on the hallway project as being complete and acceptable? Uh, to, not to my knowledge yet. Okay. We still, have some, we still have some issues. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That's all I have. What are the issues? The paint chip and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um so the, the paint stuff. Remember the stuff that no, no the stuff so that when he went in and he painted, he painted, you know, he did a double coat on the walls, but he didn't double coat the edging, so it, you can see the difference and there it just um So he did, and he didn't do an ultra smooth job smooth. of the, yeah. the um, yeah. taping and, and buttering. So. Okay. Not. Uh, that's also something that's been brought to my attention. Yeah. I, I every moment. A uh, couple particular ones. In fact, the one I'm in, I've heard about. <laughs> So I have next meeting uh, Wednesday, October 19th. Any other items from anybody time? else? What time are we meeting? Anything else you wanted? Anything oh, else? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, Thank we're good. I'm good. 19. I didn't know about the time. What day are we meeting? That's a Wednesday. Wednesday. I like 2 o'clock. That's not everybody's thing. Well, I can do 2 o'clock. You like? Oh, it's, it's only just it disrupts the whole day when you put it in the middle of the afternoon because you you're sort of right. Which which uh, which uh, Wednesday is that number one two? That's or the third. Third. I can do the third because that's second and fourth. I have something. Ten o'clock. I don't care. Ten. Ten? Well, do you want to do ten o'clock or is it just Gloria? Well, no. Well, it's, it's, it's eight o'clock that makes her upset. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or eight thirty. I think ten we can get her here. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> okay. So Let's try ten anyway. Yeah. Hope that a joke can make it too. Okay. And on the 19th. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Um, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye.